Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for listening and watching this video. My name is Jess. As promised in my last video, in today's video, my guides wanted to talk more about the moon. So in my last video titled Ascension Update 5D, Three Days of Darkness, I received information about a possible near future three days of darkness which, according to my guides, would be a pivotal time in the ascension process in which we'll begin to really break down the illusions of this the 3D density Earth reality and remove our masks on the planet. If you haven't yet watched that video, go ahead and watch that first. It'll really give you more information about how today's topic of the moon and illusion ties into the whole ascension process because it can be really confusing and I like how so far my guides have kind of nicely been laying things out and stacking information on top of each other related to other things that we've been talking about. So in today's video, we're going to be talking all about the moon. We're also going to be talking about how and why it's an illusion and what's going to happen to the moon moving forward as we step further and further away from 3D into 5D. So the information about the moon was unveiled randomly to me in a channeling I did with my guides um, and what was said was that the moon was an illusion. This idea is not new to me, I've heard it before, but it's one of those things that I just kind of tried to stay away from. <laughs> But then when it came through my channeling, when it came directly from my guides, it kind of brought my awareness to it and, and made it more real for me. And so it was um, also slightly expanded upon during the last video about the three days of darkness. So again, take a look at that video first. So I struggled with this information because to be honest, I, I was a huge moon lover. There's nothing wrong with being a moon lover or having a connection to the moon, nothing at all. But the information that came through was really quite a jolt for me, to be honest. And that's saying a lot because I am way more open-minded than your average person. I've heard so many things through my quantum hypnosis sessions and through reading Dolores Cannon books and talking with other hypnosis practitioners, but this was definitely something that was new to me and kind of took me by surprise. But also, I know that going forward as we step into 5D more and more, there's going to be a lot of surprises and a lot of new things coming through. So I'm also really excited about that. And I'm open to receiving the information and to sharing the information too. So before I begin, I want to stress that you use your own discernment and belief system. I'm not claiming truth, nor am I telling you what to believe. All I know is that this information and any information that I put out resonates with me on a soul level. So I have to just follow my gut and post it to share in case it resonates with anyone else. And I'm coming from, you know, the base camp of if it happens, then great. We're aware of it. Um, if it doesn't happen, then that's fine too. So I'm really sticking to my motto of what will be, will be, and just being completely open-minded about anything that comes through. For others, the information that I put out may not resonate with them, and that's totally fine. Again, we're all on our own unique path and journey, and our destinations may not all be the same. And more importantly, the path to get to our destinations is definitely not the same as everyone else's. But there are some collective shared energies and knowledge that needs to be brought forward in order to help each other navigate the waters that we're all trying to tread. You know, we're all treading water in the same ocean. We're just not in the same place. So uh, this information about the moon comes directly from my higher vibrational energy guides and team. It is channeled information. It does not come from me personally or my own views, opinions, or thoughts. Although I may make my own opinions about the information as I, as I share because I'm learning it along with you guys. I'm just putting it out there because 
my guides told me to, and I know better at this point than to not listen to them because I respect the connection that I have with my spirit team and also because my path is of service to others and I'm really going to honor that as much as possible. All right, enough with the disclaimers and getting on with it. So here is the channeled information I gathered from my guides about the moon. Get ready for a bedtime story. <laughs> they start off by saying, after event, referring to the strong, energetic, light upgrade event that they predict will be in the fall time. So they say again, after event, about 18 months after, the moon begins to disappear because it is an illusion of the third density earth. In actuality, the moon is a figment of your imagination and knowledge about the moon elements calls absolutely into manifestation a figment of illusion. After man made moon, central sun found out and gave a name to it. Moon means illusion in Hebrew. I then asked, so what was the Hebrew name for moon? And they said, moon's original name is Ira, E-I-R-A. And that's determined upon if I translated that correctly in my channeling. And then they said, go look it up. So a lot of times they'll give me information and say, go look it up on Google. So when I went to look it up, I stumbled upon this keyboard which assigned English letters with Hebrew symbols. So that was um, that allowed me to type in the Hebrew name with English letters because everywhere else had only the Hebrew symbols. And so when I typed in the Hebrew name with English letters E-I-R-A, Ira, what came up it, it did come up with something and it translated it with the Hebrew symbols and also with other Hebrew names um, related, which was Ira, A-I-R-A, and Ira, I-R-A. All of them related or they all mean the same thing. And the definition was to be afraid, to fear, but also to stand in awe of, to respect. So I went back to my guides and I said, you know, I looked up Ira, E-I-R-A, and it, it doesn't mean illusion. And they came back and they said, it means to fear. And I guess that does kind of go hand in hand with illusion. Illusion in the sense of, you know, this is not something to perceive as real. They went on to say, a new name was given by God or source. And I asked them to explain Okay, how exactly did that work? How did God give the name? And they said, God gave people of Earth the name Moon to name it. So, you know, that's how a lot of our information comes. It's like it comes from our higher selves or from source or from this higher energy through our inspiration and through our thoughts. So this new name, Moon, was given to the Moon. And they went on to say, because man had made an elemental planet, referring to the moon, and needed to sleep in a comfortable bed in hope that they would release the illusion and find their way back to God or source. They went on to say, but what ended up happening is a whole different story. All the planet began worshiping the moon and did not see past the illusion. Finally, the central sun opened a portal of energy that allowed the moon to have influence over the planet and people. Finally, the moon was an energetic grid for Earth and its jungle of people. So going over what was just said, the part where it says, finally the central sun opened a portal of energy that allowed the moon to have influence over the planet and people. I asked my guides to clarify this. I said, so what type of portal was opened? And they said, the sun opened portal of energy between moon and galaxy because frequent worship did not make any better for illusion. They went on to say, energy from earth powers the moon. Moon gets powerful energy from the whole planetary center. Energy from solar system. Illusion of the moon efficiently in every planet's awareness illusion of the moon gets attention from entire dang galaxy. 
Moon is a superstar. Finally, absolutely, energetic ascension is ending illusion of moon. And I commented, I said, so I guess all that attention from the entire galaxy, from the people of Earth, helped to keep that illusion going. And my guide said, yes, because where attention goes, energy for manifestation flows. And it's good to note at this point that my high vibrational guides did tell me that they consulted with the central sun to gather this information and and some of this story about the moon um, and what I could share with everyone. And I love what came through besides the jolting information of how my entire perception about the moon is crumbling, but... I love the story and it makes me think of the ancient mythologies and how they had these stories that dealt with gods and goddesses and elementals of the earth and the sun and I just love that and it makes me view those mythologies a bit really a bit differently well from a different perspective now so I went on to ask my guides because you say the moon is an illusion Is it a solid formation? Is it real? I was thinking, please don't completely shatter my reality. But they came back and they said, yes, it's real. Because man desired a counting device to tell time. Finally, a counting device was created by man. Figment of imagination turn real. Manifestation from man's mind. Elemental of earth planet. Basically, this is saying that the moon was a manifestation from the desire of man because man wanted this thing that would help them to tell time, this counting device. So in essence, it's an element of earth, it's an element of man. I asked my guides, so was the moon mentioned in the Bible? And they said, yes, because it was made in the eyes of God by then. Knowledge about moon was in biblical awareness at the time of Christ. Illusion was gone, and reality of moon existed at the time of Christ. So I then asked, so the moon must have been originally manifested a long time before the Bible, before Christ. And my guide said, yes, illusion of moon created during Atlantis. Finally, information about Atlantis drops on your doorstep. So guys, side note. Months ago, in meditation, I received information that I would be receiving information about Atlantis and Lemuria. I thought that I would be receiving this information in quantum hypnosis, QHHT, or BQH client sessions, but nothing ever came through, so I was like, maybe not now. Um... So anyway, for this to come through in my channeling now definitely got my attention. Uh, but anyway, I, got, I just wanted to add that in there as like a note maybe for future videos if more information about Atlantis and Lemuria come through. Anyway, to continue on, my guide said, referring to Atlantis. Um, so, sorry, let's just go back over. They said, yes. Illusion of moon was created during Atlantis. Then they went on to say, made moon because they needed a way for counting glory days and nights. And that's all that was said about Atlantis. Uh, But again, maybe it's a teaser of what's to come. You never know. We'll see if more information about Atlantis and Lemuria come in later. (laughs) So anyway, um, I then asked, can you tell me more about the moon fading? And they said, the moon begins to fade about 18 months after event because people do not believe in time in new earth reality. Ability to see past illusions allow the moon to disappear from 5D reality. The moon cannot enter into 5D because it is made of mostly 3D elements. Again, what we went over just a little while ago about how the moon was man-made for their ability to tell time. Very earthly element, very man-made element. I then went on to ask, so what existed before the moon? And my guide said, before moon, hero sun and fantastical stars, 
but no moon existed during dinosaur age. FYI, I was thinking about the dinosaurs when I asked this question. I was like, I wonder if there was a moon when the dinosaurs were roaming the earth. Um, but they said no moon dur existed during the dinosaur age because inner clock was not desired yet. And I kind of went on a tangent. I was like, so did the dinosaur age really exist? And they said yes, before Atlantis did and before Lemuria too. I then went on to ask, did the moon help to create linear time? And they said, yes, it created linear time because it has cycles. And in cycles is an element of time. Find out about elements of cycles in Google. Again, they referred me to Google. So I Googled, what is a cycle? And what came up was I looked at something from businessdictionary.com and there it said, Definition for a cycle was number one, periodic, repetitive sequence of events in a process that plays out over time, such as a life cycle, or keeps on going indefinitely, such as a cash cycle. Or number two, um, they defined it as a single execution of a complete set of operations in a process from beginning to end. Then I went to dictionary.com and there they defined a cycle as Number one, any complete round or series of occurrences that repeats or is repeated. Number two, they defined it as a round of years or a recurring period of time, especially one in which certain events or phenomena repeat themselves in the same order and at the same intervals. And number three, they defined it as any long period of years, age. And I went back to my guides and I was like, is this what you were looking for? Did I find the right thing? And they said, yes, cycles and time go hand in hand. Final timeline, which is the 5D new earth timeline, has many cycles, but the moon is not one of them. I then asked them, is there even a divine feminine aspect to the moon? And they said, yes, because sun is masculine, moon needed to be feminine. There was no um, feminine counterpart to the sun at that time. I then asked them, can you define the feminine energy that the moon has and where it gets it from? And my guide said, feminine energy comes from other planets in solar system. Moon gets power from the divine feminine in the solar system. Monthly cycle or menstrual cycle is connected to the cycle of galactic cycle not moon cycle. Inner clock energetically aligned with galactic cycle, not directly affected by moon. They then went on to say that the knowledge about the menstrual cycle that they just gave us came directly from the galactic center, otherwise known as God or source energy, and that that was something that I needed to say. So basically what they just said when we look at this statement is that the feminine energy, it comes from the moon, but the moon gets it from the galactic cycle. So essentially, the monthly cycle or menstrual cycle of females is connected to the galactic cycle, as well as the inner clock of everyone that's energetically aligned with the galactic cycle, which comes or maybe is filtered through the moon. So I went on to, to ask, because my guide said that the menstrual cycle and inner clock is energetically aligned with the galactic cycle. I asked them, what exactly is the galactic cycle? And my guide said, uh, galactic cycle not defined in English language. It is many and nothing. It is centered around definite God particle. It gets energy from source creator God. So that's all that I have for information regarding the moon's apparent illusion and the role it plays in our 5D ascension process. I really hope that this video has helped you to gather more information to add to your ascension toolbox. Again, please use your own discernment. I do not claim truth and all timelines and information are estimates and possibilities at this point in time. If you have watched any other videos or have information about this topic that can add to what I have, or maybe it aligns to what I have, please share in the comments. I would really love to hear about it. 
If you have any questions, go ahead and leave it in the comments as well. Your input and questions really help us all to make sense, make more sense of what's happening. And, and it really helps us all to grow our awareness and our knowledge about the whole Ascension process. We're all in this together and just gathering tools of information to add to our own Ascension toolbox. So thank you so much for listening and I'll see you in the next video.